Donette Logan here at Vestavia High Schools with a new face coach, Sean Calhoun. First, thank you for taking some time to talk to me, High School Sports Weekly. We really appreciate it. I know you guys are in the middle of all your summer training, so thanks for fitting us in there. I want to ask you a question first, start off with a little light. You came from the Georgia area. I know traffic-wise, this has got to be <laughs> a thousand times better. <laughs> uh, maybe a million times better. Uh, that, that Atlanta traffic can, can, can get heavy. You know, Birmingham, you'll get a little bit of it, but but you get through it in about 10 or 15 minutes, so I'm not gonna miss that at all. No, that rush hour is not anything. So I have to ask you this too. So you've been in Georgia, you've moved around as a coach, which is kind of coach's life a little bit. How do your kids adapt to that? You've got two girls and one son. How, how do they adapt to that moving? Well, when when me and my wife kind of got into to this, to this career, yeah. you know, this path that we were gonna take, we had a goal that when our oldest was going to start entering middle school mm -hmm. that we need to put down roots and not trying to move because I don't want to be doing that the older they get and, you right. know, and, the, more, and the more friendships yeah. that you know the deeper friendships that that they get but they're 10 9 and 6 right now so you know they're just young enough to where it hasn't shook up their whole world yeah um, but you know but but this move coming here we we plan on not going anywhere till till all three are done um, with high school. Well, and I'm an Alabama girl, moved away, came back. It's a great place to be. Do you, does your son play football? Yes, ma'am. So um, he played He played two years ago, yeah. and then he played soccer this past year, and now, and now he's going to get back into football. So, How is it like as a coach and a dad watching him out there? Can you step away from that coaching mentality and like let him, let his coaches do it, or how hard is that? You know, um, when – when he played, it, it, it was actually kind of easy for me to do it, you know, okay. and just yeah. and just and just step into dad mode, and you know, I mean, obviously when he come home and you know if he has questions and stuff, you know, that's when I can kind of coach him there. But um, you know, I, I I enjoy being a dad too, so absolutely. Sometimes you got to have that break, I know, and I know mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes as a as a coach's daughter, so I get it. Now you played as well, and I have I wonder this question: you won a state championship playing, and you've had your teams win them too as as coach. Tell me, I know they both are important to you, but there's got to be a different level of emotion in those. What's the difference in those two for you? Great question, because I've actually had conversations about it. I think you get a deeper or a, or a more significant, I guess, respect for it when you're a coach, because mm -hmm. you don't know, when you're playing, you really didn't know everything that the coaches were doing. Right. The hours and the hours <laughs> that they put in and film and the, you know just everything that goes along with being a coach you know players you know we kind of show up and you just kind of perform right you know and you prepare and, and perform you know the you know the coaching the coaching aspect of it is is a lot more than that so that was that was the glaring difference between the two for me so I know you've coached several different teams and you've had obviously different players but one thing that I wanted to ask you about you had a linebacker that was undergoing chemo whenever you were a coach and you have those tough situations. How did that impact you as a coach and just as a dad with that team? Oh, um, that, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, his name was Chase McDaniel, and um, you know, and I have my 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 sentimental uh, memorabilia that obviously that I that I brought with me here. Um, you know, his his impact and just his life and how he was when he got diagnosed all the way up to the day he passed away, you, you know, just um, what it meant to me and how it's kind of changed my life just with, you know, with just how to attack every day and, yeah. and, and when obstacles do, do, do come in your way, because obviously that's life and, you know, and just seeing the faith of him and the faith of his family and their strength, it was, I mean, it was truly, truly inspirational. You know, I think people tend to forget that the coaches you are impacting them they impact you a lot as well you've, you've been here since january what's the impact been so far here with the rebels the the amount of class that, that these kids have the amount of hard work the amount of tradition mm -hmm. they they love it here you mm -hmm. know and 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 my first day my first day meeting them my first day in the weight room my first day on the field uh you can just see that and these kids too they're so genuine and they're just they're honest mm -hmm. so they can just see right through it yeah. you know they can they can see if I'm being that and you know and and so they they've been holding me accountable 
you know, and, and I know what I'm going to get from them every day. And I just want to make sure that they know what they're going to get from me because I got to at least match their intensity for sure. You know, the intensity of these players has changed a lot, especially since you played. Mm-hmm. And now, I mean, you've got, they've got nutrition coaches, they have weight training coaches, they have you guys coming in and coaching them. So when you've got kids that are now on that recruiting trail, what are you telling them to make them stand out? Because it's so easy to have the same stats on the field, be able to press the same thing, but you've got to stand out somehow to these college recruiters. What are you telling them to do? First and foremost, they got to get it done in the classroom. You know, we let them know, you know, the more, you know, obviously the better grades, the better doors that are going to be open for you. Because every school, it doesn't matter from junior college to D3 to NAIA to your Power Five, if they're recruiting you, they're also recruiting 10 other kids just like you. So, you know, so what? So what's going to be the separation? What's going to be your your attributes that are not on the field, that are not in a stat column? Mm-hmm. You know, and those are the kids that they want. Right. You know, they can find kids that run fast, that mm-hmm. jump high and are strong, but are you going to bring value to their institution and are you going to bring value to their team? And that's in the weight room, conditioning, in the locker room, everything like that. So we definitely let those kids know what colleges are looking for. What do you think you're doing to get these players to invest in your program? They're invested in Vestavia, we know that, but getting them to buy into you and what you want to do here. Hold it, holding them accountable, you know, n- not letting not letting just the little things slide by. Yeah. I'm a I'm a big I'm a big little things guy. Mm-hmm. You know, now that now that's probably a part of me being O C D. That's just <laughs> that's just that's just a part of me. Um, but just and me showing my appreciation because playing football is hard. Right. You know, and playing football for Vestavia Hills is hard and playing football for me is hard. Yeah. If it was easy, we'd have a roster of three hundred kids. Right. And so I'm going to show them my appreciation. I'm going to take care of them. And, you know, and towards the season, you know, and if, and if, and if all that kind of kind of turns in to wins, that's great. Yeah. But, you know, but it's, the, but it's the time that you're spending with each other and also letting them know why we're doing things right. too. And, and the point of it, the point of what we're doing for on and off the field. You're a little bit younger than what – we had here before <laughs> um, and I think the coaches are getting younger you're 39 yes ma'am do you think being younger and not like closer I guess to the coach mm-hmm. the players age but a little bit do you think it that is. allows you to connect with them more absolutely and you know and, and they're still older coaches yeah. that are still coaching that, that do fantastic that connect with them too yeah. you, you know because when coach Anderson started he was younger than me so yeah. um, but Yes, just because you know kids are kids are changing, generations are, are changing, but the game of football is changing, and yes. you know, and social media is changing, and technology is changing, and it's just, and all of that is a part, and it's all intertwined, and and if you don't embrace that, and if you don't change with the times, but you're not changing your values, and you're not changing your core and your foundation, but you're able to add that to it, that's when that's when your program can really can really take off. You know, and I, I didn't want to ask you any football questions really because for one, it's just too early to talk about a team. You know, you're, you're getting to know your guys, but you are filling some big shoes. You know, Coach Anderson was here for more than four decades. And I know that people, when the change came, they're like, who are we going to get? Is it going to be the expectation we have? Is he going to be able to build onto the foundation we have here at Vestavia? For that, those alumni and those parents, what would you say to them? One, you know, I can't thank them enough for the foundation that has been laid. And, you know, just, just, just to think about all the people that he's impacted, his coaching staff has impacted, that this community has impacted for 43 years. I think he, um, we just had his retirement cer- uh, faculty ceremony. I think he's been an employee for like 49 years. Oh, wow. So, um, he, so I mean, he's an institution here. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not trying to diminish none of that because uh, I don't I don't think it doesn't matter where you are, you got to have that foundation right. of being a good person first mm-hmm. before you're a good football player. And so now when I talk about it, these kids have heard it, their parents have heard it, you know, th- this community has heard it. So I'm just trying to build it, just probably put on a new fresh cone of paint, you know, and some new wheels and try to 
and, and try to just continue to build on it. Something we say in our house all the time and I tell the boys to do something. I'm like, we're building a foundation. Trust me, one day you're going to build on it and be exactly happy it's there. Amen to that. Because you're not, you're not replacing a coach that did a bad job. You're replacing a coach that has a field named after him. Correct. One that had the most wins in the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Just an amazing coach. So it's a little bit different following those footsteps. Absolutely. One last question for you. What's been the biggest impact on your life so far as a coach? You know, it, it's probably, I mean, outside of the coaches that I, that I have coached for and with, mm -hmm. you know, just because I think any good coach that, that wants to learn and grow on a consistent basis and wants to advance, you know, I started as a position coach to a coordinator to a head coach. You know, so I was always learning how to get better, and, and I think you take things from everybody that you work with and for, mm -hmm. um, you know, and some things that you don't. Yeah. But also, uh, you touched on it. I think that Chase McDaniel um, situation, because you can go to coaching clinics yeah. and you can read coaching books, but that's a topic that's never talked about. Right. About you're, you're how, never taught how to deal with that. No, nope. and how to deal with a full football program and a community and your football program is 14 to 17 18 year olds their family and their and and so they're and so their brothers going through it so right. how so how do you how do you lead everybody and lead yourself every day through that um i mean that i mean that has changed the way that i've that i do things on a daily weekly monthly and yearly basis so you know it was a tragedy of course yeah when, when you look at you know just losing a life but the po so many positives have came out of it and their foundation now the chase the victory foundation and just everything but but that has impacted me the most for sure i can i can understand that and see all right mm -hmm. coach thank you so much we look forward to kind of watching you and the program grow over the next season and next few years thank you for having me very much Thanks. thank you When it comes to an injury, you shouldn't have to be a professional athlete to get professional care. In fact, you shouldn't have to be an athlete at all. At OS1, we understand that orthopedic injuries occur to all types of people at all times of the day. Our convenient location allows you to get immediate attention without having to go to an emergency room. We have on-site digital x-ray and MRI and our sports medicine specialists are fellowship trained and are here to get you back to it, whatever it might be. The best part is that OS1 is generally less expensive than the ER and our decreased wait times make sure you are able to spend less time waiting and more time getting better. For more information or to book an appointment, please visit our website at bettersooner.com or just come to our Hoover location. OS1 Sports Injury Clinic. Get better sooner.